I think I accidentally have this on my back side too. Oh, there we go. Is that just from us or was that? No, I, was, I was manually fading down there. Okay, because I was going to be like, that was out there a little long, but all right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night here from uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Hope you all are doing well and having a good day wherever you may be. We're here for episode 548 of the Cultivate Crypto Show with our special guest here, <laughs> Sir Sterling Cooper. A guy who's not very <laughs> synonymous with crypto. <laughs> well, yeah, but except for the, the streams where me and Miguel have uh, jumped on, I think, your channel a couple times talking yeah. about crypto and... Um, We'll make you synonymous with crypto there. How about that? Let's do that. I'm happy with that. Because <laughs> it's going mainstream, baby. So, um, yeah, how are you doing today? Awesome, mate. Awesome. Good. It's good, good. To be, good to be back here. I like this city. Yeah. No, Las yeah. Vegas is great, right? It's just like, you've been here quite often. Yeah. yeah. I used to work out here all the time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Very familiar with it. Lo like uh, the same girls as Lamar Odom. <laughs> mm. Let's not get into that. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're just going to chill here today. We're going to be talking about altcoin investing in 2023. And, um, you know, I think, yeah, a lot of people probably don't know how deep your knowledge is in crypto. I think you've been in it a while. You know some people within the industry. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll get into that today. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just before we jump into that, I uh, just want to give a shout out here to our number one Moonganger in the chat today. We got Carlos jumping in first. So appreciate you, sir, as well as uh, Juan Ray with, on a close second there. So uh, appreciate you guys for jumping in. Smash the like button and all that jazz. So... Um, I told Sterling before the show, do you want to do the memes? And Sterling was like, hell yes. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Anyone who follows me on Instagram knows I'm a big fan of memes. Oh, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not specifically a crypto meme guy, right. but I get some of these, so we're good. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So perfect. We'll have some fun here today as well. So let's jump into the memes, see the sentiment of the market. We're going to do like a, a very tight hour here for you guys here uh, today. So uh, uh, we'll jump into the memes. We'll jump into the, the price action of, on the charts, and then we'll get into our discussion on the altcoin market here today. So, uh, do you want to, the question is, do you want to have the first or second meme? Uh, the second one. I like, I prefer to the second one. The second one was funnier. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. All right. So <laughs> here we are. Um, got your new toilet paper brand. Um, everybody who uh, left their money on FTX, uh, this is your consolation prize with the bearish toilet paper. Be like, yeah, just uh, make sure to wipe well. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Yeah. <laughs> SBF's new venture to once again take all your shit. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> this is his proper job. This is where yeah. he should be always employed, right? Yeah. But, bro, that, that's the biggest scam. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it's anyone who's not, you know, obviously your entire audience is very, very familiar with this. Mm. But for people outside of like the crypto space, this just took them by surprise. Like, and they, un they downplayed it in the media constantly. Yeah. Well, so uh, the biggest, big, one of the biggest donors to the Democratic Party, just a massive money laundering scam. Yeah. And poof. No, like no one's been prosecuted. Shit's just disappearing. No one's been prosecuted. Oh, well, because it's it's Bitcoin's fault. It's Bitcoin's fault that this happened. That's what I heard. Good you lord. Know, no, like, it certainly isn't. It's human beings yeah. that pulled that crap off. And yeah. centralized entities, right? So it's like, mm, basically, this is like the Wall Street playbook, right? Throw all of those guys in jail. I think Iceland was the only country during the 2008-2009 uh, crash that actually like threw yeah. people in jail. So uh, Absolutely. Uh, I guess shout out to Julian Assange on that one. I guess the uh, YouTube is probably going to take me down now. But <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take this one. Uh, we got Sam Bigman fried shooting his investors and saying, why would CZ do that? He's such a mean guy. <laughs> Just shift the blame, you know? <laughs> Oh, you got the hard one. <laughs> but I actually don't get this meme, so this is why I was like, That's why it's hard. You should, you should, this is where you got to pay your gas fees. I don't understand. The, okay, the, the Matic reference, I don't quite get. Right, so basically, I'll, I'll... See, memes are no fun when you have to explain them, but I'll explain it anyways. <laughs> Just ruining your show. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all right. So basically, and, and good thing, I didn't even notice Matic, to be honest. So that was uh, actually a good eye. So uh, this is where you go to pay your gas fees. So this is where you should be going to pay your gas fees, but you're paying all your gas fees on MetaMask and Matic because you're buying so much on the network, basically. So you're you're a DeFi native yeah, in this case. That needs, like, that seriously needs to, like... That, if, any, if there's anything that's going to stop Ethereum from absolutely blowing up, it's this it's ridiculous gas fees when like the market yes. goes like super bullish. Yes, and so that's why like companies like Disney, Nike, you know, uh, basically the mainstream have partnered with Matic because they know this is like what's going to give them lower fees. And mm. uh, yeah, so it's interesting. I think Apple 
they're coming out with their Google or not not Google Glass, but basically the the same version of that, but it's like a sunglasses that'll kind of be like your your VR AR headset. And so they're not yet like what do you call it? Uh, marketing it towards the metaverse, but they're getting there. They're getting there. Probably give them a year. Isn't Elon, isn't Elon making moves like that too? Uh, oh, is that the British? No, Elon company? Musk with, uh, oh, with, Elon. Tw- with Twitter and stuff. He's making moves oh, in regards yeah. to... Uh... And Tencent is too. Mm. So they're all, they're all, it's an amoebic state right now. So we, we'll talk about that today. Uh, we'll talk, that's going to be fun. Um, I guess I'll jump on this one because uh, it's Charles, right? So go, we'll go to Crypto Charles. I buy, it goes down. I sell, it goes up. I think about <laughs> buying, it goes up. I think about selling, it goes down. I hold it goes sideways for three years. What the <laughs> fuck am I supposed to do with this crypto game? <laughs> I know a lot of people who are in that that exact situation. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And and I would say this always and like because the memes do give you sentiment, they do give you words of wisdom here. And so the words of wisdom to live by here on this meme, I would say, essentially is be patient. Once you're in position, just hold. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not a terrible. I mean, hold hold fundamentals too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like your Bitcoin to theorems, hold, hold the fundamentals, right? Exactly, exactly. You got this one. Yeah, let's zoom on this one. 2010, I'm a millionaire, I'm a Bitcoiner. 2020, I'm a millionaire, I'm a Bitcoiner. 2023, you got a broke millionaire on the left <laughs> <laughs> because of inflation. Mm-hmm. And uh, the guy on the right's got a rock and a Lambo by the looks of it, and I'm a Bitcoiner. And 2024, you got the Citadel on the right. <laughs> He's a Bitcoiner. They say he has a whole coin. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> See, this one's very, uh, this one's understandable right from the get go, right? Yeah. I mean, it, that's what it's. I actually, I'm optimistic. I'm very optimistic that we'll get to that future. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's why we, that's one of our, our main products is called the Citadel because yeah. everybody's goal in the Moon Gang essentially is to get to that Citadel. Because, like, here's the thing, right? In crypto, it's like if the world goes to shit and we get rich, well, we're rich, so, well, at least there's a consolation, right? There's a consolation prize, yeah. But if the world doesn't go to shit and we get rich, well, well, we're still rich. So <laughs> I don't see the downside. <laughs> like, the, the, only, the only negative argument against, like, crypto, in my opinion, yeah, really, is... Okay, there's, there's two potential, like, nuclear weapons for, like, crypto. Yes. One is, like, um, Satoshi... Satoshi's mm. identi- identity being revealed, yes, or the coins in his wallet moving. Either of those things. Oh, Either I think the coins in the movement w- would be the first one. Oh, yeah, that'd be the that worst. would that would nuke the market instantly, and you, you, yeah, yeah, Bitcoin would basically be over, and then and then consequently crypto would be over. Everything. Yeah. And the second thing, the only other realistic option is like an EMP, a worldwide mm. EMP electromagnetic magnetic pulse that literally destroyed technology in, in the internet. And in yeah. that case, we're back we're back to like the Stone Age anyway. So what does it matter? Yeah, you okay, know, like, go, you know, I'll like, go live in the caves of the Grand Canyon. Yeah, or like something. your bank account, <laughs> your bank account's gone then too. So like fiat currency's trash anyway. Like the only people who are laughing then are those who actually have gold and silver. Yep. So. I, I saw this meme from uh, I think it was. Was it Nigeria? Or I forget which country it was, but it was some African country that lost like all their money in the currency recently, you know? And like, there was just some lady, she was just like in an office shutting at the top of her lungs. She's like, she just realized it. She's like, it's a Ponzi, it's a Ponzi. And I'm just like, oh, it's so like, it's terrible to see. Cause like literally there was like riding in the streets and like it was real shit, right? But like, they, I mean, if you don't want to have it come to that before you realize it, right? Yeah, she should have. They should, the average citizen does not realize how much of a, car, a, a Ponzi the fiat monetary system is. Not at all. They've got no clue. Yep. And it's scary. It's like, terrifying. I mean, this is why I do ex- everything of what I do on my channel is because of that. And yeah. I mean, not because I think fiat currency is going to go to zero. I think it'll still have its place. But um, the other thing I would say to the point that you were making there, which is maybe a third thing, which... Um, they they think will hurt crypto or Bitcoin, but I don't think it will, is essentially the central bank digital currency. And the only reason why I would add that one on there is because they think it's going to beat crypto. That's part of the reason, or at least Narelle Rubini is giving that, is giving that narrative. Oh, we won't need crypto anymore if we have central bank digital currencies. But um, the, the thing that they don't understand is it still doesn't make the fiat currency any better because it's digital where you still have to have that scarcity. So um, yeah, but, exactly, exactly. And, and, yeah, there's a scary part about the CBDCs is like whether they can stop people from on ramping. Yeah, from fiat. Into, oh, they will be. Yeah, exactly. So it's yeah. like then it becomes super, super scarce. Mm-hmm. Anyone who still has a bit, and it's still going to be traded, and it can be infinitely like broken down into inf- infinitesimal small pieces, so it can still be traded. Yep. So it's like okay, it's going to still have value. Ooh, he has a whole coin. <laughs> <laughs> you got this one. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so seriously want to spend your life stacking stats and living on the Bitcoin standard? Yes. A life without debt or inflation? And there he is with his glorious homestead. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and this is funny because I literally have a friend who's done exactly this. Mm. Exactly, exactly this situation. He, he made his money, he made like his first millions with, uh, with cryptocurrency. And he literally said, all right, like off, I'm off grid. I've got a farm. Nice. He's, he's pumped all the money. He bought, built his house with all that crypto money. Buying cows and mm. chickens, and uh, uh, you know, got the Amish to build him a house. Wow! Like, paid the Amish to build him like a wooden house. That's awesome. Uh, which is badass. Bought like eighty acres, something like that. Okay. Of, of farmland, and yeah, this is literally like he's got solar panels and everything. This is literally him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the awesome thing about this is they need a satellite here because Blockstream um, the, is basically talking about Satoshi, right? So Adam Back, who is a British uh, cryptographer. They he created Hashcash in the mid '90s, and he's the guy who created the uh, basically the uh, technology behind proof of work, which does the mining for Bitcoin, right? And so um, he's been rumored to be Satoshi um, to for different few different reasons, but um, he created this company called Blockstream, and that allows you to essentially run Bitcoin, like you can mine it, you can just run a node to run the network through satellites, as long as you have a satellite dish. So. You know, if he's powering a satellite dish and a laptop with those solar panels, he can run the Bitcoin blockchain. He could probably run other networks as well. And then, boom, you're, you're connected, baby. You can and he's still going. Instant trade out here in the boonies, oh, you know? Man, that's amazing. <laughs> I love that. And last but not least, I'll take this one. <laughs> Bear market rallies explained. The Titanic is sinking, and, he, and the guy in the back says, if we're sinking, why are we 200 feet in the air? Uh, this is, <laughs> for all you dip buyers out there, anybody who wants to buy more coins, this is the meme they want to see. But I would say, uh, I don't want to. I want to see more pump. But uh, hey, we're going down in the market right now. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the crypto market, where we're sitting at right now, and then we'll uh, talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then we'll get into the conversation that me and Sterling are wanting to have here with you guys today. So um, just taking a look at what on the day today we're still above a trillion in market cap bitcoin ethereum dominance hasn't really changed all that much nothing's pumping more than 10 percent on the day and not really much is dumping more than 10 percent on the day either which is just telling us everything's consolidating and the the moves to the downside you are seeing in coins right now is essentially i would say uh just very normal daily action going bitcoin still finding a cycle low essentially so there's not really too much to be alarmed at or really look at it. So we'll look at stacks, which is down 10% on the day. And then we'll take a look at the lower cap, the 100 to 200 market cap, see if anything is down more than 15% or up more than 15% on the day. Got Coin Metro and Access <laughs> doing ridiculous gains on the day. So uh, most likely to, due to news or fundamentals, but nothing down more than 10% to the, on the lower cap coins either. So like the entire market is pretty much just going sideways right now because Bitcoin's still a little weak here. But um, we'll take a look at these three stacks here, right? Down 10% on the day. It looks like versus both Bitcoin as well as the dollar. And um, yeah, it, it had massive gains, broke out here above 50 cents. Um, yeah, it's just coming down to test support somewhere between 50 to 60 cents. It's currently at 66. So yeah, um, just wait for Bitcoin Right. If you're if you're like, hey, I wanted more stacks before this breakout and I couldn't get it on this pullback, then sometime between, I would say, the middle of this month to the first week of April, that will be the time uh, essentially to snipe. Um, and I, I would say that's going to be the most uh, the case, most likely for most altcoins as well. I think I use most most frequently there. Um, but we go over to Coin Metro XCM, 63, 64 cents don't get it never mind um just basically this one has super low liquidity it's probably a coin that just barely jumped to the top 200 just absolute shit coin don't want anything to do with it um that's pretty much all you need to know there <laughs> and then we got access protocol acx here on the solana network and we know most coins on the solana network don't do great over time this one has been dumping since mid-february it's a newer coin this one probably gets some play might be worth taking a look at it. Um, 
reinventing content monetization. All right, Access Protocol offers a new model monetization layer for all digital content creators by integrating Access Protocol on their site. Creators can uh, pay well and enable premium content to their supporters. So the interesting thing about this, and, and as a fellow YouTube content creator, you'll probably appreciate this as well, Sterling, is so you would, I guess, when looking at that use case, what would be your first initial impression um, here looking at like a, a crypto related content thing where you're like, man, that is just like not something I need to know. So what exa So I'm, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what their, their initial op their offering mm. is. Like reinventing content monetization. Is it, is it the monetization side or is the hosting side of it? So just the monetization side. So it looks uh, like this is a plugin that you could probably, I'm guessing. So it says protocol offers a new model of monetization for content creators. Uh, can you can create a paywall and enable premium. So basically, for example, let's say you wanted to do, um, uh, what was that site called that a lot of people use? Um, it's it's not Rumble, but it's where you can get paid. Um, a lot Patreon. There we go. Uh, there we go. So basically, this is like a Patreon where you can accept crypto. It looks like yeah. So here's the so the the, the adult industry's been trying to do that for a while. Mm. And the problem they, that you run into with crypto is you can't do recurring billing, right? I mean, unless these guys are trying to solve that problem, which I don't know. I don't know how you would do that with like with you know crypto contracts and approving like the transactions and stuff. To be honest, right? I don't know. I mean, maybe you know the answer to that, but yeah, usually there's like a, a third party that's related to it that like is a like a middleman that that starts doing that, and so mm. it's like an you have to have it connected with an exchange. The thing that's interesting about this to me is that it's like. We don't need that necessarily right now, but it would be nice to have mm. if it does well. And the thing that it needs to do well, in my opinion, probably it needs a trend in this direction. And the thing that's interesting is Susan, uh, I can't remember last name, Wachowski or something. Yeah, the, YouTube. The, yeah, the CEO. She recently stepped down. Yep. And the guy who stepped in her place essentially was helping to basically get YouTube into the Web3 space. Mm. So I think this type of content monetization will be... Uh, there will be a crypto version of content monetization on YouTube, but it might start with NFTs first. And so this is maybe one of those products that's like, hey, YouTube doesn't allow you to do it yet. It's going in that direction. Hey, why don't you plug this in right. or use this? So that's the only thing I could maybe, if I'm trying to argue for this, like that would be the only way I could see this being you know, useful in the next it, couple of years. Be, be, it would be interesting if these guys ever collabed or integrated with um, Odyssey, previously Library. Mm. Oh, right. Yeah. Because Library, like Library, Fun thing about library. So library is like, like literally a direct competitor to YouTube, which is completely uncensorable. Yes. People think people like I, I see all these creators jumping on the Rumble, and like Rumble's still run by like people. Mm. Odyssey is literally blockchain. Like it, you ain't getting rid of like no one's canceling you because they can't cancel you. There's no one in charge. Yeah. It's literally just running on the blockchain. Um, but li I believe library got taken to to uh, to court with the SEC. Like. Yep. Trying to claim the security and, and crap like that. They're basically just trying to... My conclusion, because they've been in court for like ages and they're mm. the price of the library token dumped because of that. Yeah. The conclusion I've come to is that because you can't censor anything on Odyssey, mm. that's the only place where like, yeah, Rumble, it's free right now. If they get to somebody, if they pay... They bri people can be bribed and people can be like incentivized oh. with various... They, they likely will be. Yeah, with various means. Yeah. So eventually that censorship is going to come there. Odyssey ain't, ain't getting any censorship. So they're trying to shut that thing down yes. as quickly as they possibly can <laughs> so that you can't have a totally uncensorable free platform. I mean, look at the way Twitter's exploded right now. Yeah. Like, Twitter has become... Is literally decentralized journalism now. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, the interesting thing is, like, uh, what's his face? Uh, Jack Dorsey. Um, basically, he created, like, in tandem with Twitter being sold to Elon Musk, he's like, I'm going to go create a decentralized version as well. Mm. So I'm wondering, I'm like, they've got to be talking with each other at some level, yeah. right? And they've got to be like, okay, let's do this and let's do that. And I guess, because we were talking, like, I, we mean just Sterling when we got here, like, hey, what's up? You know, just chit-chatting. And, like, I ended up talking about some tinfoil hat theory. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, don't mind me. It's, it might be a little, you know, on the fridge or whatever. And Sterling was like, I, I love that shit. Right up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> it's all me. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, the, the one thing about, you know, freedom of information and uncensorable social networks, right? I think the disadvantage of those compared to Web2 media that we've had essentially is the cool factor. Yeah. You need the cool factor to get people to use the platform yep. and the decentralized versions. They're just good databases for you to like store your, your play, uh, your videos and stuff like that. But when somebody figures out that cool factor, right? Like for example, I mean, uh, WikiLeaks itself. I mean, it's probably not something I want to talk about too much on YouTube, but it's one at the same time. 
um, there was a decent or it was an encrypted way for people to give secrets to each other, right? Right. And once you get something, and then even when it was being useful like that, it wasn't like world news or anything until like it got a little bit of the cool factor once like Julian Assange started getting arrested. People were like, oh shit, like actually this might be important, right? And stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, I mean, people love resistance. I mean, people love that for part of crypto, right? So that could be, you know, eventually, right? Mm -hmm. Something that kind of clicks. But again, their decentralized platforms aren't that great at marketing either. No, no, because, because so. again, because it's 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 a it's run by guy it's run by idealists. Yeah, like people who believe in the technology and believe in the cause. Yeah, and they're not necessarily like the best marketers on the planet. Oh yeah, you exactly, know? exactly. So. But hey, you know, it'll, it'll get it uh, started, it looks like. So, you know, maybe, you know, down the road, it might do something. Um, jumped up in market cap pretty good here now for Access Protocol. Um, it's at 1.2 cents. Again, uh, this part right here looks good that it's done since early March. I mean, it went from 30% or 40% of a penny. It's up up uh, about 3x right now. So, I mean, that that's looked pretty good on it. But um, this would definitely require a lot more information. And I would say, uh, generally speaking, um, the only hope that you have to make money on this since it's on Solana, I mean, a lot of Solana projects simply, um, they dump a lot. And the only, I guess, hope for this, uh, in addition to that to it being on Solana would be that the Solana VCs basically start connecting this to maybe some of their web two platforms. Um, that would be the only, uh, kind of bull case I could make for this one. So, um, yeah, that's what we got moving here. It looks like on the top, uh, 200 in crypto. So not too much going on here today. Maybe a little extra to look into. Let's take a quick look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then we'll, we'll jump into the discussion here uh, a little bit more deeply. And I think one thing I mentioned is like a lot of the people on my channel already know who, who Sterling, Sterling is because we've done affiliates, um, and stuff like that before we jumped on your channel. We have yeah. a lot of mutual contacts, but, um, I do want you to properly introduce yourself after once we get into the main That's topic point, as well. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But, um, <laughs> I'm just trying to get the, uh, the, cause like I, I always give everybody a, a daily update. I want to make sure to get that um in the day here as well so we got bitcoin here um essentially having uh been on its current cycle for 66 days um so it's still trying to find a cycle low it's hit a new uh low in price basically from this down move uh the recent most recent low was here at twenty two thousand. it looks like it's jumped um a good chunk below there here today it's currently just above 22 and so similar to that um pattern i was talking about it could be the finishing essentially of this a wave pattern um and i would say if you see bitcoin dump anymore it'll go down to about twenty one thousand five hundred. but the thing is here we turn on our Bollinger Bands. Yeah, it's just starting to open up those daily bands right now. So yeah, over the next, I would say, two or three days, it's going to be uh, more than likely dumping down and uh, I would say towards that 21,000 level. And then you potentially have a bounce here at that level. And you might get a nice bounce back up to somewhere between this 22,800 towards about 23,250, maybe in that range. And then we still have another chance for dump. If we don't really get that that relief rally and we just continue going down here below that 21,500 mark, that would be really bad. Um, and I think there's some people out there that are like, yeah, I want lower prices and everything. It's like, yes. But at the same time, you want to keep a constructive pattern in a bull trend, right? You don't want to break the bull trend pattern so much that you're going to lose all the bullish momentum, right? And so um, this type of pattern here would continue the bullish momentum, even though it'd be a lot of chop here in the market um, between now and essentially the Fed meeting uh, later this month when uh, they potentially talk about um, more interest rate hikes. And, uh, you know, it's a, right now there's some, Jerome Powell talked a little bit earlier today, and essentially uh, the S&P 500 has been dumping on a lot of that news. Um, and, he, I think a lot of people out there have basically said that it's possible uh, that we get about uh, a 50 basis point hike. It's about 50% possible in that next meeting. Um, and so we've gotten a bit of a dump here today. Um, this ba went back below that 50 week, or sorry, 50 day moving average at uh, 3,994. Um, so you'd want to see this recover here in the next few days if you want any more pump on Bitcoin. But as long as this continues dumping down here towards 39 or 38 test to test that trend line again, um, then you get headwinds for Bitcoin. So going back to Bitcoin though, so that's where the headwinds are coming from here today. And this is 
part of the reason why Bitcoin's price is coming down here. Um, the other reason is we're towards the end of a cycle, so there is still weakness here. Um, you could all, well, I, I'll keep that alternate scenario for tomorrow. We'll just hold off on that one today. But that's the main bit of news here. So Bitcoin's been holding up just fine here over the last few days. Doesn't have uh, a lot of downside pressure. So if that's the case for Bitcoin, right, then it, that's also the case here for Ethereum. So you would expect Ethereum. If Bitcoin goes down to 21,500, then you'll see Ethereum basically come down here to 1,500. And we were mentioning this last week that that would be essentially a great area to, to buy. And then if you do look here, at essentially where we have the most support on the daily. You get a ton of support down here uh, in the low to mid 1400s for Ethereum. So if Ethereum does get that low, right, I would say that's extremely cheap. Anywhere below 1475 or 1450, uh, Ethereum starts to get uber, uber cheap. And if you do take a look at it on the weekly as well, right, you do have that 200 week moving average coming in at uh, 1437. So you're probably going to get see some support there on Ethereum and then on Bitcoin at 21,500. So as long as those areas, you know, generally hold um, in the middle of this week, um, then yeah, this is, uh, you know, not a terrible pullback on the weekly close, though, right, you don't want Ethereum closing be much below 1500 here on the week, right, the last three weeks have basically been giving up the gains that we had here on that mid February pump, you don't want to go and have a weekly close below that area because then you definitely will crash towards this 1400 area. And I guess on, on Bitcoin on the weekly as well, right? It's coming up here at support in that same area. So we're, we're getting support where we should be. And the, the, inter the other interesting thing here on Bitcoin is it's between a rock and a hard place, right? We have this uh, 50 day moving average coming down. That's basically it's resistance to the upside. And we have our 10 EMA or 12 EMA um, both here um, creating support of that 21,500 mark. So uh, once one of those areas breaks on a weekly close, either below 21,500 or in this case above uh, about 23,500, then you get your next move um, from there for probably a couple of weeks, either uh, two or three or four weeks to the upside from there or to the downside, uh, depending. And then the last but not least, um, same thing here on the total market cap. We talked about this on the Moon Gang on Sunday. Um, you're again coming to that 200 week moving average, this uh, 200, sorry, this uh, 12 EMA here. And then you have that 50 week and that trend line actually um, uh, acting as resistance. So if you start seeing all of crypto's market cap go back below um, 950 or $945 billion, that is going to lead to more weakness and we could have a dump in altcoins as well as bitcoin ethereum uh or at least a crab market on those going into um early late march early april so this you know just mark the dates on your calendar right we got our um march 14th here is our cpi numbers talking about inflation um so uh, you know how hard do they need to beat that back um you know uh, basically on the 22nd will highly depend on what number comes out on that date. Um, and then here, uh, remember the 22nd is uh, the date here this month where um, they may increase it 25 basis points, which would then just, you know, probably have the market pump a bit um, or 50 basis points, which would have the market dump substantially to some extent going into April. So um, yeah, that's the way the wind is blown and the cookies crumbling here in crypto today. Um, so yeah, I guess, any thoughts on kind of where we're at in the market right now, Sterling, maybe um, for, for yourself personally or just in general? Yep. You, first of all, you didn't really know your shit. <laughs> Thank That's you. A, that was impressive, man. You really know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually just started learning a little bit about like like trend lines and analysis. And okay. Like how to break this stuff down. But like 99% of that went over my head, but a little bit of I got. So. Yeah. Well, like, uh, I think uh, George here, who's helping us today, um, he was saying the same thing. He was like, you know, after kind of watching the show for the last few months that I've been in the studio here, he's like, it's like walking into the class mid semester. Right. And you're kind of like, okay, I see what's going on. I'm getting this. But like, you know, after a few weeks and you're like, ah, everything's starting to click. Definitely. Yeah. Without a doubt. You got to, Sterling, tune in more, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to make you a bazillion. Every I, single I just, day, I just Sterling. Talk, I just, every single day. No. <laughs> I just talked to Charlie and Miguel personally. And said, it's true. <laughs> yeah, we're just like, Sterling, now is the time to buy you. Yeah. Like, All right. <laughs> I got the cheat codes, man. I got their phone number. That is true. <laughs> that is a good cheat code. <laughs> I mean, you know, the Citadel, um, speaking, speaking of uh, cheat codes, 
come over here to the Citadel. Um, if you don't have uh, me and Miguel's number, like Sterling, this is the closest you can get to it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can dial us up here at the Citadel. Um, come over to cultivatecrypto.com slash shop um, and then jump into the Citadel. Um, we uh, Earlier uh, yesterday, um, we uh, came out with our Too Long Didn't Read weekly newsletter, which will help you um, with a lot of stuff going into the Fed meeting and the CPI numbers next week. So there's a lot of information in there, as well as a technical, fundamental, and on-chain data perspective of what's happening here in crypto. Um, so if you want to be ready for your week, um, jump in there and get that. And then we have a lot of good conversation on there. And then on top of it, the cherry on top of that is that you do get $15 off a future crypto mindset course every month that you do renew in the Citadel. So this is really only $50 a month if you plan to take at least one crypto mindset course per year. So jump into the Citadel. You'll, uh, you'll, you won't regret it. And um, yeah. Um, but uh, Sterling's got our number, so we, we just tell him, hey, now's the time <laughs> you, to buy. You, just tell me, like, <laughs> like, you guys have helped me make a bit of, bit of money here and there. Yeah, it's really like white privilege. I don't know. What do you, what do you want to call it? <laughs> Phone number privilege. Phone number privilege, yeah. So that that's kind of a good way to lead into the conversation today. So we're talking about, you know, like, hey, we, we chat about crypto. Um, O'Day, who uh, has been on Miguel's channel, he was in here just before he won the, his own fight like a couple weeks ago. Very nice. Um, UFC, he's he's talking my ear off on crypto. I was like, holy shit, this guy does a ton. Um, but like, I, I'm always, a lot of people, um, I think, don't understand like, um, mm, kind of like if you're, because like, I think a lot of people are like, hey, you know, you know a lot about crypto, like you have to be, you're like your crypto expert or you know nothing, right? But I think like you're in that uh, kind of Goldilocks zone of where you've done a lot of your own research, you've actually looked into it. And I think a lot of large uh, content creators basically in the space really do do that, right? Yeah. Like the smart people who are looking at trends and everything, like this is the way finance is going. So I kind of want to hear your take and then also like hear, uh, let the audience know who you are. Um, a little bit as well because we yeah. didn't do that at the beginning. Yeah, we didn't but... do that at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So why the hell am I here? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a personal friend of Charlie's and a personal friend of Miguel's. Uh, Sterling Cooper. I'm a former adult film star, actually, which has got really nothing to do with crypto at all, except yeah. for the, except for the fact that the adult industry tends to innovate quite a lot in in any industry, and they definitely are pursuing that in, in... Yeah, and there's a lot of people talking about crypto in that industry yeah, as well, Everyone's they, they're like, I mean, Lana Rhodes is an example, someone they paid to shill out mm. a coin, like, they, they use, like, the adult entertainers to kind of, kind of pump a bunch of stuff that right. definitely definitely happens. Um, you know, and there's a, there was a... I actually made a bunch of money off, like, Spank Coin. Yeah, uh, <laughs> back in 2017. Last, yeah, I mean, I made, the, I made that money last year, oh, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I was, didn't... I didn't Spank. know that was I'm not thinking going of, on. No, it, it was Spank and it was Cum Rocket were the two most famous ones. <laughs> I, made, I made my money off Spank. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I, I, this it's just like if you understand like the basic fundamentals of like crypto, then I think you understand like the way the, the whole economy kind of operates and the way that like the markets mm. and stuff operate on like, but it's a faster timeline. It's way, it's way more, obviously everyone knows way more volatility, way more up, like more <laughs> bigger ups, bigger downs. Yes. But like for young people, this is kind of like your opportunity to actually like make decent life changing money because like w like the baby boomers had real estate mm. and their their pockets got like inflated by the pr constant printing of money yeah. you know and then the, the the real estate market exploded like that but we've been left holding the bag for that inflation and now there isn't thanks to bitcoin and things like ethereum and and, and everything else now there is an opportunity for younger people to actually like escape that that debt slavery and that inflation slavery yeah and that's and for me that is that is why i pay so much attention to this mm. um, obviously not to the degree that you do but you know mm. like i i know i know how staking works i know how to like you know like like D, DeFi. i understand the basics of DeFi and how to make money through that yep. so it's just like there's all these different tools that you the average person doesn't have access to mm. unless they're like a banker but now everyone has that power in their hands. Yeah. And it's incredible. Which, it is incredible. And like, um, you know, like you're from the UK. Australia. Oh, you're originally Australian. Australia. Okay, I forgot about that actually. Yeah. Sorry. Um, but being through the Commonwealth, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Going through, um, you know, the the uh, the monarchy, the imperialism, all that <laughs> stuff, right? All the fun stuff. <laughs> um, like, I would say people who are paying attention in that system understand how money works, especially Australia, you know, because right now Australia is kind of between a rock and a hard place, actually, because a lot of their gold was taken from the UK, yeah. right, in terms of, you know, hey, you're part of the Commonwealth, so this is our common money, right? Really, right, it's not. And yeah. then versus China, right, which is 
heavily influencing the Australian government in the back end. And there's been some news reports about that in Australia come into light, but a lot of it's probably being suppressed and there's actually a lot more influence there than, but it all leads back to the money. Oh, know? it's a massive influence. Um, like the Australian, the, the Australian economy would, would be like third world if it didn't just dig stuff out of the ground. Right. Um, purely because of the, the work ethic of Australians and that, like generally across the board. Mm. Which, which part of Australia was it that you originally uh, from? Western Australia is where I'm from. Perth? Uh, Perth was the city that I studied in and stuff, but I'm from uh, a small okay. place south I, of that. I went for, to Murdoch University for like six months. Oh, there you go. I'm from UWA, so there you okay, go. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I studied abroad. You studied, you know? oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, went, you just walked up. I went abroad. You just rocked up, okay. Yeah, it was a good time. But there's, there's a bunch of stuff that's happened. Like the Australian real estate market right now is in this weird spot, and especially the Western Australian one when I went home. Mm. There's this weird, like, perfect storm of like, perfect shit storm, I should say, where mm. people aren't, there's, there's not enough homes. So there's a real estate shortage, there's like a housing shortage in Western Australia. No one can afford to build new homes because the, uh, the cost of hiring blue collar labor is super, super high. And they're in massive demand because no one's taking those jobs. No young people are taking the jobs mm. of, of, you know, building a, a bricklayer or a carpenter or whatever. Yep. So their prices are jacked up. So no one can afford to build a new home. There's a bunch of all the real a large chunk of the real estate that does exist. The inventory has been bought up by Chinese investors and they don't rent it out. Right. They don't, they don't rent it or lease it. They just, they just buy it to have hold assets so they can get a visa. It's like the Californians here in Nevada. Yeah. 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 So there's, there's that happening. So then you've got like the average home buyer. I mean, my brother and my my brother and my sister both brought, bought uh, homes last year. Mm. So I, I kind of have an understanding where they're sitting at with this. And then the other thing is, you because you you can't find a house to to rent. So rent's super super expensive. No young people are taking like these basic like out of high school out of university jobs like you know working in retail mm. or any, any of these really really simple like wage jobs. Because the job doesn't pay enough to afford their rent, right? So there's just this crazy circumstance going on right now, especially in Western Australia. And they've, then they've also stopped the produ- the mining of uh, coal and the mi- and the the timber industry as well, because wow. the Greeny Party is in charge, like or has a heavy influence there now. So these two massive industries have just gone, gone. to zero, tanked. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell are you gonna do? Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of scary for. That's why I'm not living there. It's kind of scary for anyone living out there right now. Right, right. And so it's like, okay, we're in a digital world now, right? We're in the uh, age of, of digitalization, right? So I think, you know, working through the digital space is the best place to do it. And like you said, you kind of can have more ownership uh, of your of your business. So like, I guess in terms of like um, how you would define the business that you, you work in right now, like how would you define what you're, what you're doing? Well, te- you, could te- you could say I'm a content creator, but technically I'm an email marketer. Okay. Yeah, that's that's how I would actually define the way I make my money is okay. email marketing. So yeah, entirely entirely location independent. Um, you know, very blessed to be able to do that. But I I teach guys how to how to solve problems in the bedroom. Like yep. Yeah. The the, the four horsemen of the dick apocalypse. <laughs> so erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, delayed ejaculation, and uh, performance anxiety. There you go. They're the four horsemen of the dick apocalypse. I smite thee, and uh, you know help you guys <laughs> get back get back on the horse in the bedroom. Perfect. And but, so, uh, like, I mean, you know, it's what? Sex, money, and uh, health, essentially, which are the top three yeah, I mean, quadrants that, of that, money that, in the that's, internet. That's life. That's, yeah. life. That's, 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 that's where everyone's problems in life come from, too, you know? And yeah. it's, if you can't, fit, any frustration in your life will come from those areas. Correct. Simple. And so where does kind of crypto fit into that? I kind of want to cover both. You were saying, like, for younger people, it's a great area for them to lift up their portfolio. And then for, I guess, yourself as well, like... Yeah. Where does the crypto portfolio fit within the business? Also, like, you know, I know you might be looking at real estate and other stuff like that. You mentioned your, some of your family bought into that. So, like, how does that, like, from somebody who's, like, a digital nomad to some extent, right? Yeah. Like, how does that work? I mean, for me, it's a, it's it's something I invest in constantly. Okay. Like, even in, even in especially in, like, a bear market. Yes. So, like, I, I'm, I'm in this weird position where I, I actually bought my first ever bit of crypto. It was Ethereum. I bought it at the very, very, very bottom. Mm. Very, like, it was, like, $200, something like that. Way back, when was that? 2020. Yeah. It would have been when I $200. My, but I only had $200 yeah. to spend. <laughs> so I had no money. I was broke. I only made, I've only made my money in the last, like, two years. Mm. And so... That that perspective of like, oh damn, I timed it, but I'm <laughs> I had no no dry powder, right. no cash flow. So now I'm in a position where I have very very good cash flow. So I'm like I'm very I'm making a lot more concerted effort to be strategic about where I'm where I'm placing that money. Mm. And for me, 
I just see this crypto as long term the single best bet I could be making for my long term financial success. Mm. And that's investing in the, right now in a bear market, investing in the basics like your Bitcoins and Ethereum. And I do also invest in Hex. Uh, I, actually, I also timed that. I got the bottom of Hex <laughs> thanks to you nice. guys. Uh, yeah, and that's doing quite well right now. What, and, what price uh, was it? Where were you getting in? Uh, well, at two cents. Nice. Yeah. I got, I, got in at, I got in at three and then again at two. Nice. And it dropped again. I was like, I right, this ain't this is coming this is coming up. If it's dropped a little bit like that, it's gonna come up again. Yep. And then uh, yeah, and I've I love I have a lot of faith in you and I have a lot of faith in Miguel mm. and the and that thank you that community as well. I think it's it's a very interesting one because <clears throat> like most cryptos are driven by like stories, mm. realistically. Yes, it's like narratives. And this is actually something that so my friend who made who has that homestead we talked about. Which he made, he made his millions in crypto. Mm. He works for a crypto company. I won't say which one, but he does. Um, that's where he made his. He was getting paid a part of his salary was getting paid in crypto coins, yeah. and then it vested uh, right at the peak. And he was like, he actually called me up in the, at like three a.m. in the morning. He was like, <laughs> "I'm a millionaire." <laughs> I'm like, oh shit! I'm like, "Good for you, good for you. I love it. I wow. love it." And then he just sold. Uh, he, he slightly later he basically cashed out um, a mm. large majority of it, Smart and then man. used that to buy his homestead and, and set himself, him and his family, up for like a off-grid future where they are no longer dependent upon the banking system. They no, they no, no longer have any debt. Mm. Inflation doesn't really matter anymore. That He bought, used it also, also used it to buy a ton of gold and silver, like physical mm. gold and silver. So he's hedging his bets like that, right? And was that the same guy we, we did a podcast with on your uh, channel one time? Let's, let's not say that because then people will know who he is. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Or, I mean, oh, too or late, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, so, but anyway, he's the guy who got me into into crypto in the first place. Mm. Like, convinced me to go down the rabbit hole and learn about it. But oddly enough, he was actually terrible at timing the market a bunch of times. Okay, like he would make all these all these bets and stuff about different cryptos and things. And he would come at this is the point I was trying to make. He mm. would come at it from an engineering perspective, from a technical perspective. Right. The fundamentals are sound in this crypto because he's an engineer. Like mm. he's like he loves what he does. He loves his work. He loves making a good product. Mm. And so he's like, oh, that has great fundamentals. This will do well. And that happened consistently through the through the bull market, like wrong, wrong, <laughs> wrong. Because um, he's only on fundamentals. Yes, oh, and then okay. and that's why I think Hex is a very Hex and Pulse Chain and Richard Hart in general. It's a it's a very very interesting community because it's mm. it they're like the most vocal one of the, obviously the most vocal crypto community on YouTube. Yep, constantly drawing attention to it, and that is what kind of drives all of this stuff. Yeah, marketing. Yeah, marketing. Shit yep. marketing, man. Well, why, that's, why they, that's why they pay people like Lana Rhodes or Jake Paul to like shill coins. Yeah. You know? Well, and that's well, why we don't here because exactly. I know there's like an ethical line yep. that like if I can make my own services and provide value, right, to the to the network or, you know, to YouTube, to the, the world, right? Yep. I would much rather take money for doing those types of services than being like, hey, guys, everybody go over to uh, BitGet or, uh, yeah. you know, whatever. And Because like I, I just couldn't do that type of business, right? Yeah. But like... Um, most other crypto YouTubers out there, that's what they do because it, then what happens is those companies promote your channel, you get bigger, faster, and boom, oh, I got, you know, so like it's, you you have to find where, you know, it's it's kind of like when, with anything in money. When I came into sales as a professional, right, um, before like when I was in corporate and everything, um, finding that line in sales between morality and making money it is a very great area and it's a very hard area to find. So I think it is like everybody kind of has to find what that balance is in crypto, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to sell your soul right. for like, and, and, and your followers. You're selling it because it's exit liquidity. You're, mm. Like these people are literally using their own fans right. as exit liquidity. Like exit liquidity yep. for when they shill a coin, and it's just yep. like, where's the moral bound? That's just it's, zero. It's, there's no morals there. It's horrible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why, and, then you, and I, that's why I respect you guys because you don't do that. Mm. So it's like, you know, thank you. Yeah, yeah well, and, and, so, I, and I know other. I know a lot of. I have a few other big influencer friends mm. who've been approached many times to, oh, yeah. do, to do something like that, yep. and they've all turned it down for the exact same reason. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And when we're hitting new all-time highs, you know, like those things come around like daily, right? It's right. I like, bet they do. <laughs> and it's just like, hey, here's thirty thousand dollars in USDT and USDC, and it's like, I don't want to touch that. Yeah. Not at all. It's good. No, for you. thank you. So yeah. yeah. But so so kind of going back then to, um, I guess I'll, I'll first focus on kind of what you've been doing with crypto. So you're saying here, you know, basically crypto has helped you to kind of. Um, just have like a piggy bank here, a nice savings account, essentially, in addition to you know your other investments from the money that you've recently just started. Yeah, it's a hedge, it, it, it's a hedge against inflation. It's like it's it's easily the best return on investment I could make. 
as long as I'm not careless with it, as long as I'm, I'm not just gambling right. and, and chasing so, shit coins. If we're talking about shit coins, yeah. all coins would be part of the subject today, right? Um, if we're chasing some shit coins, then, well, you're talking about hex, right? I mean, here's the great thing, right? Is like, um, we don't mind if we're not mainstream, right? Both of us in our business have basically been okay with that. Yeah. And hex isn't, so we get a lot of people out there. There's just a guy on the channel, I think on Thursday or something, he came into the channel. He's like, you're showing hex to people who are just getting into crypto. Like you're a terrible person and stuff. But like for you, why is hex, uh, not a gamble versus Bitcoin Ethereum? Because obviously the, the volatility is a lot lower in Bitcoin Ethereum. So like what? What's the appeal for you when you're looking at a coin like that, even though a lot of people in crypto are like, it's a scam, it's a Ponzi scam? Yeah, I mean, my, because it's come out the other end of like the bull market, the mm -hmm. bear market, or crap, use the term crab market, which I find, I've never heard that before. Oh, that's just basically when there's no trend and everybody's going sideways, right? Fuck, yeah. Yeah, I, exactly. I like that. I like that term. I'm going to steal that. Yeah. So we've come out the other end, and Richard Hart is still pumping, is, is still building new things, mm. like with Pulse Chain. Correct. For example, right? He's still working. Like normally, like the way shit coins work is like people promote them, they like, and then all the tech, the investors and the tech team and like all the founders and stuff, they just dump their their coins on the unwilling public, and then the bear market or the bull market finishes and they're gone. Yeah, they never touch it ever again. Yep. They're, and that's not happening mm. from what I can see, at least. Correct. That's not happening with hex and with pulse chain and things like that. So oh, to nice. me, that's like to me, that's a clear indication that there's like. Like this community is going to be around for a while. This project's going to keep going for a while. Yep. You know, um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it, it makes it into like a top 10 crypto one day. And, and so like for a lot of people, when they come into crypto, then they're like, well, you just kind of started making you know, like snowballing a good chunk of money. You're doing very well. Why would you want to, to risk that? And you were saying as a hedge against inflation. So like, how do you, how do you see like, okay, so like hex coming back, you know, if it goes to an all time high, right from like that three cent area to three cent area, which you bought, essentially it's a 20 X to new all time high. And that's just the starting of a bull market, right? Not even, you know, a full on bull market. So like, that's going to be great. I agree with the portfolio hundred percent, but like, I'm kind of like a lot of people aren't willing to take that level of risk. Like, right. A lot of people are like that to me is, is a little crazy. Well, because the most, like the, there's a reason why like you have, when, when things are going great, when you have a bull market, everyone's putting their money into it. Everyone's putting their money into it. Mm. But that's not where you make the money. You make them, you look at every, every great investor in history makes their real money in the lows, in the bear market. Yep. They, they see the deals. They're like, okay, now's time to hedge my bets and actually use my cash flow to invest in. Because I'm, I'm thinking on like a five year timeline. I'm not thinking on like Smart. a one year, six month, two year time. I'm thinking for five years. Yep. Like, okay, if I put money into Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a few other bets here and here and here, things that I think have a, have a long enough time frame that, that, that'll pay off, cool, that's literally life-changing money. That's generational wealth, really. Mm. And it's like, okay, but you can only do that if you have dry powder cash flow, and the the best time to do it is when it's at the very, very bottom of the load. Yep. Rather than, you know, okay, if, if you have some, let's say, insider information, and you have like a brand new project, okay, maybe you're privy to something other people don't know. Right. But most people don't have that information. Correct. You know, what you do have is knowledge that it's like in a, in relatively in a bear market and it's down the bottom. So now, like, same with, same with like people, the amount of money that people made during like the real estate crash, mm. what, two, uh, 2008, because they came in, all this inventory, super cheap, bought it all up, and now they're multi, multi millionaires. Mm. It's the exact same principle. It's like, okay, yep. when... When no one else is interested, like doing the, you need to be doing the opposite of what most people are doing, basically. <laughs> yeah. Like, Don't be the, a lemming, right? Yeah, because the average person doesn't have a, like the average person is gambling. Yes. The average person is just gambling when it comes to like stocks, when it comes to crypto, all that stuff. Shiba Inu. Yeah, they're literally yeah. just gambling. And it's just like, well, that's not the correct way to do it. Right. You know? So that's a good way to segue then into, so what coins at the moment Right. Are you like, okay, I'm comfortable with these. I don't think this is gambling in crypto, either based on the chart or, or based on whatever, because I know um, you're pretty selective when it comes to the, those coins. Yeah, because I've made, I made some bad mistakes. In, I made some wins and I had some losses. Oh, everybody has. Everyone, but everyone got, you got it, right? But, but I had to learn that. I'd, I'd, I'd you know, go through that whole experience and figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, I mean, now, now, realistically, I'm only really paying attention to, like, four coins, and that's, like, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Hex, and Pulse Chain, really. Perfect. Yeah. And so for the Pulse Chain space, are you looking, because like, did you sacrifice or are you looking to get in once it's live? Uh, it's the Pulse X sacrifice. I believe. Oh, you got into that. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Not the actual Pulse, but the Pulse X sacrifice. Yep. yep. So I'm one step behind, unfortunately. No, no. Well, so here's the thing. Like, I think there's a lot of people out there that are like, 
yeah, a pulse. You know, I don't got any pulse because I only got pulse X. I started paying attention to it at the time. But, I mean, that's still great, I think. And, you know, when they come out, I think there's a lot of people expecting pulse X to go down. People will sell that for getting into pulse, yep. which I think is an opportunity to double down on the pulse X. Right. I think you don't have to worry so much about which one you're in at the beginning um, as much as just like, if I don't have some, then I'm going to accumulate more. Yeah, I agree. Right? So it's exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. And so, and I, and I, and that's the thing. Like, I have the risk tolerance to be able to do that. Right. You know, and that's why I don't. I don't think, like, it would be. It's very, very hard to make a living with crypto in this kind of a market. Yeah. That's definitely. why I don't look at it as like I look at it as an investment, not an income source. Like, I'm not a day trader. Smart. You know. Yeah. Um, because I have cash flow coming from somewhere else. Exactly. I use it as a means to multiply my cash flow and make it, and, and on a long term time horizon. So that's a that's a good point, right? Because like. We don't advocate day trading as well. We're like, hey, if you're going to trade, do it on a swing of like three, six, nine months, something like that, right? Um, so for you, when you're looking at the charts, because you mentioned like, hey, you're starting to kind of learn about the the moving averages and stuff, like what motivated you to start learning that? And like, how's it gone so far? What have you, what have you kind of... 90% of it still goes way over my head. Uh, okay. <laughs> what, motivated, what motivated, motivated me to get into it in the first place, I guess, was, to, to, was recognizing that, okay, well, great. The, the market... It crashed. It's in, we're in a bear market crypto wise now. Mm. This is a perfect opportunity for me to learn this stuff yep. now while I've got plenty of dry powder, prices are low. Because then, in like one, two, three, four, five years' time, whatever, when we, whenever we see another bull market again, mm. I'm going to be in a fantastic position to, to massively capitalize on that. Right. right now, when things are quiet and no one's paying attention, and it's like, okay, great. It's not as, it's not as, not as volatile and, and moving as fast as when it was. You know, a year or two ago. Yeah, it's a great time for me to sit down and learn and actually pay more attention. Yeah, to it. Well, that's great. Without it, without it, without, it, without my speed of learning yeah. being outpaced by the speed of the market, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And, and how do you structure that for yourself? Do you like be like, okay, I'm gonna like sit down for like an hour a day, thirty minutes a day, five minutes a day? I have a, I have or... a few different courses and things I go through, and I take notes and I, and I sit down and read, watch my watch the, watch the lectures, take notes. Yep. And then step back and try and apply them. Okay, like, uh, and like how things like, things like trading view and things like that. Yeah, and how often would you say like how much time are you putting into it on like maybe like I'll try to do it on the weekends right now. Okay, yeah, Smart. Like, Saturday Sundays if I can sit sit down. And I, I'm boring. I don't have a social life. I'll just sit there and and, <laughs> and learn <laughs> and learn exciting things like this. Yeah, well, it's, so that's the thing, right? Is like I think a lot of people are like it takes a lot, right? It's like it's that foundation, that beginning level, which you're like okay. Got to just sit down, pay attention to it, really focus, right? But like once you once you start getting that, you know, um, then it just is a matter of just you know kind of keeping up. With to me, the it seems it seems like learning a new like it like it looks like learning a language to me. Right, it is. You know, and that's the same thing. Learning a new language is kind of frustrating, 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 mm -hmm. and then eventually you start actually having conversations with people. Right, and you start understanding people, and so it's the same. I look, I think I'm a, I'm thinking at it like that. It's the same kind of system in my brain at least okay like understanding like the way you just talked about charts and things and understanding how to read them and stuff and understanding trends and understanding what what correlates with what mm. okay cool this is like a new language i have to learn and, yep. and pay attention to okay and for, for me like one of the biggest things that i i mean and i mean you def, you definitely talked about this before mm. one of the biggest things for me was like okay understanding how everything correlates to bitcoin in the market like every it's just follows the trend of bitcoin right and then yep. Bitcoin's correlation to like the stock market and the US dollar mm. and like okay well if we see because correct me if I'm wrong if the the US dollar does badly Bitcoin just tends to do very well yep right so it's like what thing and we had this, we touched on this before we went live like the things that I'm paying attention I'm you know taking note of right now are like okay well what's what are some potential red flags for the US dollar mm. that are coming on the horizon that could mean a like giant change right. in the price of Bitcoin. Yeah, I would say, yeah, for me, it's central bank digital currencies, but for, what are some of the things that you've been paying attention to there? Because so, I, I know you were talking a little bit about yeah. um, other countries with BRICS and, and yeah, stuff like yeah. this. So, yeah, so, uh, BRICS, B -R -I -C -S, mm. like B-R-I-C-S, is like a trade deal like a group, um, which involves Brazil, Russia, India, um, China, and South Africa, mm. as the acronyms, right? Yep. and it's it's and it's they're basically trying to looking at taking on like the U.S. dollar effectively, mm. like with their trade organization, and that's super interesting. I think because they're such disjointed countries, but they're like I mean, 
three of them are in one like giant economic block right next to each other mm. and like china and india america buys a, buys and sells a ton of stuff a ton of stuff mm. there's a ton of trade between those two so if like if bricks become because because the, the conversation that you, you hear a lot is like oh like when will the u.s dollar like who could what currency could top the u.s dollar who could mm. possibly be the next superpower and you look at russia you look at china and it's like they don't quite have everything they need to do that to take over the US dollar as like the petrodollar, mm. for example, right? Yep. Because that's what that's what gives the US dollar its power is that it's pegged to the to the price of oil, the petrodollar. Yep. So okay, if like Russia ain't as economically strong as it needs to be, and China is, China's population is on the, the decline. Yep. So it's like well, neither of them kind of fit all the criteria for taking over as a individual country as a superpower. Mm. Same, you know, kind of like how the US took over from the UK and the UK took over from uh, I believe it was. Denmark? Yeah, and Spain as well. In Spain? Cool. Yep. So we've seen the same trend, right? Spanish Armada. Yeah. Lots of gold. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but what was with this BRIC thing is an interesting new situation where it might not be one individual, like one key superpower. It might be this collective. Mm. Kind of like how the EU was trying to do it, but it's not quite the same from what I see. Yeah. Because they're all in such, they're all like in spatially so so separated yeah oh, and and since 1987 right or well i'll mention 1987 as a specific thing happening that year but since the, the i would say the mid to late 80s right everybody's been talking not everybody but a lot of economists have been talking about the possibility of a global currency mm. but um I think it's more likely, and this, if you uh, listen to the book, The Sovereign Individual, they also talk about, you probably have heard that. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. So like, um, basically with that, they talk about there's probably more likelihood to be multiple currencies, like instead of like one world reserve currency, mm. globalization essentially coming to an end and that leading to kind of a, a generation of not necessarily chaos, but um, the lines between... Um, mm, organizations that don't necessarily follow what you would call the law versus the ones who create the laws and those bleeding into kind of acting similarly until the government gets its shit together essentially and eventually comes up with a better system than it's currently doing because essentially what we built for globalism is, isn't sustainable is what they're talking about but um uh, i think you know with BRICS and all these countries they have a common not enemy well it depends on how you look at it who they're which time of the day a common, you're asking a common them. competitor there you go. <laughs> That's probably a better way to look at it because it's leading towards some shit. But um, the common competitor essentially being um, enough of a motivator there. And they don't trust each other either. Yeah. Right. So they need something that is an intermediate between them with, that they don't have to trust. And one of those things has been gold. I know Brazil, um, I think it was maybe over to South Africa, had sent like a cargo plane. It was like you know one of those giant military planes loaded the whole thing up with gold, sent it all the way over there. And then they also sent some Bitcoin, uh, or it might have been a Middle Eastern country. I can't remember. It was during the last bull market. They sent some Bitcoin, and then they sent like a shit ton of gold. And it's like, which one was easier? Yeah. Right. And, and but both of them are trustless, so they don't have the other country doesn't have to trust that that is money or that they will repay their debt or anything like that. Versus, you know, the United States always gives out debt and is like, don't worry about it. I'm good for it. You know, they they never technically are, right? Yeah, because it's a giant Ponzi scheme. Right. The Federal Reserve and, and the fiat monetary system in the U.S. is a complete Ponzi. <laughs> Total <laughs> yep. utter Ponzi. Um, and the only thing that keeps it alive is the, is the fact that it's pegged to the, to the oil price, mm. like the petrodollar. It's the only thing that really keeps it going. Um, I mean, it's probably not the only thing, but it's the, probably, probably the most significant thing that keeps it going, right? Yeah. And so then you look at, like, you look at the Middle East right now as well. Mm. So the Middle East is becoming very, very powerful. Well, yeah, and the last... <laughs> I mean, this is terrible, but, you know, the last Middle Eastern and African-related person who tried to change the money, the last two were Saddam Hussein and Minar uh, Gaddafi, right? Mm. So it's just like one of those things where I'm just like... What happened to them? Yeah, I'm just like, maybe you want to slow your roll on that, you know. But, like, it's one of the things where it's like, well, if BRICS starts doing it, and then some countries in the Middle East start doing it, getting, you know, start, you know, going well, down that road. It, well, it, one of the interesting things that's happening is China is talking to Saudi Arabia right now. Yep about dealing with about you know buying oil not using the US dollars right They're using like the Chinese yen or whatever or maybe some new currency that they might come up with but it's like if that like Saudi Arabia is in a really interesting position because Saudi Arabia is so right now I've got I've got some friends who are involved with the Neom project okay in Saudi Arabia so they're trying to build this thing it's like a three city um, project which is trying to push Saudi Arabia into like the you know the modern age or whatever you want to call it because um, the, the prince of Saudi Arabia right now is making massive moves, mm. massive moves. He's, he's changed a lot of stuff over there. Um, he's the guy who let women drive, for example. He tried mm. to get rid of, rid of a lot of Wahhabism 
in the country. That was the okay. very the very extremist um, Islamic sort of uh, uh, element yep. in Saudi Arabia. But they're all this neo project they're doing in Saudi Arabia is basically they're trying to compete with Dubai. Ah. So a lot of people are, there's a ton of money going into Dubai because it's a city. It's a, it's a safe city. Mm. It's clean. It's great for banking. It's great. It's it's very friendly to people who have wealth. Mm. And they're deliberately making it that way. And, and it's also a great place to spend their wealth. <laughs> they want to spend their wealth. <laughs> so the money stays there. And I think Saudi Arabia have recognized that. They have a ton of, of money with the oil they have, obviously. And, and, and I think they probably like the richest people on earth live yeah. there. They just haven't really said how much. Like with Saudi Aramco, when it did its IPO, they're like, oh, yeah, we just became like the biggest company by market cap. But like, don't worry about us. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of unreported wealth there. Yeah. That's for, for certain. But. With this building of this Neom project, they're trying to compete with Dubai in that way. Mm. And you're going to see a ton of... I'm, I'm looking for opportunities to like invest in that if there's ever a chance, like real estate-wise or whatever. But there's going to be a ton of money flying, flooding into there. And because of this relation, the, the talks that they're having with China, Saudi Arabia has the, the potential to like literally just screw over the petrol goal if they wanted mm. to. If they, started, if they started selling oil to China not in US dollars, that would be a pretty significant move. Yeah, and recently China was like, hey, you know, we want some action in the market. So they started taking some of the dollars that they've been hoarding, right? And just putting them into the market and like, hey, how about that inflation there, guys? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they could do all these things, right? Because I think uh, outside of, because there's the Euro European US dollar version, it's basically like the dollar that they use in Europe to settle in dollars, but they kind of, manipulate the price a little bit to kind of like make a little extra on top they got they, there's that and then they, there's all the u.s dollars in china essentially that like the europeans are going to play ball they're going to do what you know the u.s mm. wants them to do but china's not right yeah they're not gonna do anything. Yeah. so there's, there's there's for me those are the two things that i kind of want to just use as a barometer test to pay attention to like the process pro, the progression of bricks and the progression of like saudi arabia's like development and like what that means for basically the u.s petrodollar yeah and you talked about like the bear market lows being in you're confident to take risk on altcoins at the moment and there's a lot of people out there who don't see that yet right now but a lot of people ask me like charlie where's the money going to come from right well it's already coming from china and then in terms of saudi arabia right dubai has like like you said one of the most friendliest um, cases to basically like hey do crypto here Indonesia may also end up actually um, going to be a hub. One reason is because um, they don't extradite people back to the United States. Wow. Crazy, right? That's where the guys from uh, Three Arrows Capital um, went, essentially. That's why they haven't been caught yet. Did not know that. That's interesting. Yeah, huh. yeah a little a little sauce there for you. But <laughs> <laughs> not the sauce that necessarily we want to be talking about here on YouTube. But hey, you know, we, we talk about the way it is, right? And it's, it's one of these things where it's like... Um, kind of one of the subjects I want to end off on here today is kind of one of the, the ones that you mentioned a little earlier, which is um, it's a good opportunity for people who are, are making money to basically continue getting a, uh, not a cash flow, but basically a, a piggy bank, a long-term savings. But you mentioned for like younger guys, right, um, who are looking to get into finance, like crypto is one of the, the best areas to kind of start getting into. And I know you, you do mentor a lot of people. So, um, well, I direct, I, when it comes to financial stuff, I, I, Direct young guys to people who know a lot more about the subject than I do, like gotcha. you or Charlie, and you know, yep. you Miguel. So yeah, yeah, I appreciate. I don't specifically. I'm not. I ain't the, I cannot teach things the way you can teach. Of course, things. but <laughs> what I, I guess where I was going with that is like, um, why do you, do you recommend that to them? Why do you think right, that right, opportunity right. is there for them? Because we're talking about all these things um, where it's like, hey, all this money is flowing and it's starting to get out of the U.S.'s control. A lot of people are still like. Well, I've been told that U.S. controls everything, and that's never going to change. And so I'm all, they're always going by the old playbook. They're not trying to adjust to the new playbook, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just an opportunity. It's like, because you can't play the game that you can't play the same kind, like the kind of games you can play in the crypto space. Like DeFi is an example of it, right? You can't play that as like an eighteen-year-old kid mm. in like the financial markets. <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah, impossible. It's impossible. Yeah, you know, and the barrier, to, like, you can start with as little money as you have. Mm. You can literally, st and but you're not, maybe you're not necessarily going to make a ton of money, but you're going to you're going to learn all these fundamentals. So that, I'm not saying that you should 100% do um, you know 
only 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 do crypto if that, like if you've of got, course you've got no cash flow and you're a young guy <laughs> you've got no skills you should be learning skills and making some money first <laughs> so get, that you get can, a sales job yeah so that you can then actually play in this space and learn those fundamentals about investing long-term investing understanding the crypto space because it's not it's not going away anytime soon like i said unless there's a giant emp yes. which nukes the like hits the entire planet and then we've got more thing bigger things to worry about anyway so you might as well like this is an opportunity for you to be to separate you need to separate yourself from like basically the baby boomer economy mm. in my opinion yeah because th there's those people don't want you to play yeah and they, they they rig the rules against you deliberately yep you know so that's kind of that's kind of my perspective on it why i think it's a good thing to, for young guys to to get into to understand they're also like technologically natives they grew mm. up with iphones and computers and stuff and the internet they grew up with all that yeah so it's going to come to them much quicker Mm. than say like a baby boomer like my my dad would never he was like 72 he never learned be able to understand how the hell crypto works never interesting that you say that like um i, I still believe like it j it takes a lot more effort to get them into it right. that, but i still believe that there's a, like it's kind of like uh i think anybody has a chance to to learn about it if they really truly want to but again it, it's still hard to teach my, an old my, dog my, dad is a, my dad is probably an extreme scenario my dad couldn't even use the remote control on the television there okay when I was growing up. <laughs> we had to change the channel for him <laughs> okay now now okay maybe never extreme. mind that never mind that so no i appreciate that and um, no i think that's good advice and i think that's a, a good way to look at it yeah so uh for just for um everybody or whatever what's the best place um people can follow you and i guess um you know if people you know um want to follow you what kind of content can they can they yeah. look for as well nothing at all like this it doesn't <laughs> these, these conversations, i mean I'm, having, I'm actually having more conversations like this recently to be perfectly honest uh that is my instagram that's on screen right there that's where you can find me on instagram uh you can also find me on at on twitter at sterling wisdom that's where you can find me on twitter and on youtube i'm uh, obviously sterling cooper you type that in you'll find me uh, I primarily help guys with with date with relationships, dating, and sex advice. That's basically my my primary skill set and niche. Um, yeah, but I like to talk about all kinds of things, especially like the more tinfoil hat, the better. I really enjoy this kind of conversation. <laughs> well, yeah, I think this is a good way for us to kind of uh, go into what's happening here in the crypto market. It's a good way for people to kind of see like how risk tolerant you know uh, other people are, and they's like you know it's like just get into the market and start learning about this stuff because. I think a lot of the stuff that you talked about here today as well, I think a lot of people who are not yet unplugged from the, the mainstream media don't even know about that stuff. So there's a lot of stuff to learn in all these spaces. Um, go follow Sterling there on Instagram as well as Twitter. Um, I threw the Twitter um, in there as well. So um, yeah, we'll be back here tomorrow from uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as usual, uh, talking about more crypto, what's going on in the market and everything like that. So uh, until tomorrow, guys, peace, live long and prosper. We'll catch you all again soon. Later.